The source that I recently spoke with had some really interesting insights into the real reasons why Tesla created the new large format 4680 battery, and it really is not all about the cost. Yes, lowering the cost of battery manufacturing is important, and it is a big benefit of this new battery technology, but really that's just a benefit and not a reason. So let's talk about the real reasons why Tesla created this 4680 battery format. And yes, it's not just about cost and talk about how it's key to Tesla's future. I'm John and welcome to Cleaner Watt. Elon Musk and Tesla definitely appear confident that their approach in the 4680 battery is going to be a key piece of transitioning the world to sustainable energy. And as Elon Musk mentioned in Tesla's Q2 2022 conference call, quote, is some breakthrough needed in battery technology for the world to transition to sustainability? The answer is no. Even if there was zero technology breakthroughs, so literally zero from where the technology is right now, we could fully transition Earth to sustainable energy. He went on to say, the issue is very much the rate at which the entire supply chain from mining to refining to cell production, how fast can that grow? The faster it grows, the faster we transition to a sustainable energy economy. Now, if you remember when you go back to battery day, Tesla put up this slide and talked about um, some of the benefits of this new battery technology and not only the technology itself, but also uh, the manufacturing, the way they were going to manufacture these batteries. And they talked about the potential for a huge range increase, a reduction in the amount of dollars that it costs per kilowatt hour for these batteries, and also a decrease in the investment per gigawatt hour for building out these factories and making these batteries. However, if you paid attention to the beginning parts of the Battery Day presentation, you may already be aware of this, but the real reason why the 4680 batteries exist comes down to the massive scale that is needed to actually transition the world to sustainable energy. And the 4680 battery is the key to making this a reality. According to Tesla's estimations that they shared at Battery Day, in order to transition all transportation to 100% electric, that would require around 10 terawatt hours of batteries per year. In addition, when it comes to the energy side of the equation, Tesla also estimated that would take around 10 terawatt hours of battery production per year to have a 100% transition there as well. When you just hear these terms, terawatt hour, gigawatt hour, etc., it's easy to forget how large of a scale that really is. A terawatt hour battery factory is insane. Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada, for instance, as I mentioned in the past video, produces somewhere over 2 billion individual 2170 batteries per year. 2 billion with a B. And that equates to somewhere around 36 to 39 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. Just imagine how many individual batteries are being produced to make a Tera factory. A terawatt hour is a very large number, and to produce 20 terawatt hours per year is a very massive undertaking. This problem of scaling production of batteries up enough to transition the world to sustainable energy is something that Tesla talked about at Battery Day, and they put up this slide showing that a fully built out gigafactory should be able to produce somewhere around 0.15 terawatt hours, which is 150 gigawatt hours. And remember that this number 150 gigawatt hours per year is for the fully built out Gigafactory Nevada. Remember that Gigafactory Nevada is really only operating at a small footprint of what the master plan actually called for. As a reminder, Gigafactory Nevada produces around 36 to 39 gigawatt hours per year, not 150 gigawatt hours per year, which would be um, the goal if the factory was completely expanded and built out. Nonetheless, if Gigafactory Nevada was fully built out and producing 150 gigawatt hours of batteries per year, it would take around 135 of these factories to produce 20 terawatt hours of batteries per year. And this of course leads to various problems. Number one, where do you put these factories? Obviously that's a problem. Number two, uh, the money involved with building out these factories. That can be very expensive. And Tesla estimated at Battery Day that it would take somewhere around $2 trillion of an investment to build out this many factories. And Tesla also estimated that this would take somewhere around 2.8 million people to make this possible to run these 135 gigafactories. So when you look at this and you think about building out 135 gigafactories, and you also think about the money involved in that and the number of skilled employees that you'd have to hire, 
that seems like that's going to take a long time to transition the world to sustainable energy. And we need to do this as quickly as possible. And really the answer is improving the efficiency of these factories. So when it comes to maximizing a battery factory, the output of a battery factory, you can measure it in uh, how many batteries are being produced per square foot uh, of the factory. You could also measure it in how many batteries are being produced per employee working in that factory. The 4680 battery technology itself actually helps this in one really big key way. For instance, one 4680 Tesla battery is equivalent to somewhere around five 2170 batteries when it comes to energy storage. And once again, this is not really due to energy density gains, which I believe will get better in the future, but it's just due to the sheer size of the two batteries, this large 46 millimeter diameter battery as compared to a smaller 21 millimeter diameter battery. There's just a huge size difference, so obviously the bigger cell will hold more energy. But how does a larger battery format translate to solving this problem? In order to fully understand this, how a larger format battery uh, really solves a lot of these problems, we need to do just a little bit of math. Once again, according to the source that I recently spoke with, Gigafactory Nevada produces over 2 billion individual 2170 batteries per year. That source also mentioned that each individual 2170 battery that is being produced at Gigafactory Nevada has an energy storage capacity of around 18.4 watt hours. So just to use a round number, if you multiply 2 billion individual batteries times 18.4 watt hours, that gives you an output of around 36.8 gigawatt hours of batteries, once again representing annual output. Now when it comes to the energy capacity of the 4680 battery, Jordan from The Limiting Factor on YouTube recently did a teardown of a 4680 battery and according to the estimates in that video, the 4680 battery has an energy capacity somewhere around 96 to 99 watt hours per battery. So if you do that same math and you take 2 billion individual 4680 batteries and you multiply that by 96 watt hours, that gives you somewhere around 192 gigawatt hours of battery capacity, once again producing the same amount of battery cells. So boom, just like magic, just by switching to a larger battery form factor, this allows potentially for a large increase in not the number of batteries being produced, but the amount of energy storage or capacity that's being produced per factory. So really this is the reason why Tesla decided to move to a large format 4680 battery cell, because just form factor alone um, allows for very huge potential increases in the number of gigawatt hours that can be produced per factory, uh, per employee, even without increasing the number of battery cells being produced at a factory. Now, besides just the form factor, I do wanna spend just a moment once again talking about Tesla's dry battery electrode processes. Um, you might be familiar with this, but I think it's important that we just briefly talk about this. But basically, when it comes to manufacturing electrodes in a regular battery factory, first of all, you have to mix all the ingredients together with a wet process. Then you have to coat the metallic film and let that dry. And you have a number of ovens that you have to run that through. And then you have to go through a compression and calendaring process. Several years ago, Tesla purchased a company called Maxwell Technologies, which we talked about a lot in the past. And one of the key reasons why they bought this company came down to um, some of their knowledge about building these, these electrodes with a dry process instead of a wet process. Tesla is still working out the kinks in this process, but nonetheless, once they figure all this out, it should allow Tesla to remove a lot of the middle parts of this process. And as you can see, basically they'll be able to go from mixing the dry electrode materials to the dry coat and then the calendaring process. As Tesla mentioned at Battery Day, this allows for somewhere around a 10 times uh, footprint reduction for this dry electrode process versus the uh, wet process manufacturing of electrodes. I'm not gonna dive into it now, but at Tesla's Battery Day, they also mentioned a number of other uh, improvements to the factory. And what they said is basically at the end of the day, they're aiming for one assembly line at uh, a factory producing 4680 batteries to produce around 20 gigawatt hours per year of batteries per line. When it comes to how this compares to Gigafactory Nevada, according to the source I spoke with, Gigafactory lines, the high-speed lines 11 through 14, 
can produce over 600,000 individual 2170 batteries per day per line. So that equates to somewhere a bit over four gigawatt hours per year for each of Tesla's newest high speed lines at Gigafactory Nevada producing 2170 batteries. So if Tesla's 4680 battery technology is able to improve each line to 20 gigawatt hours, that alone is pretty impressive and will make a big difference in Tesla producing enough batteries to meet their future goals and help transition the world to sustainable energy. With that context in mind, I believe it's important that we step back just for a minute and just think about how important the 4680 battery format and the success of this battery format, how important that is to Tesla achieving their huge, massive future goals. As Tesla showed at Battery Day, they hope to produce somewhere around three terawatt hours of batteries per year um, by 2030. And Elon Musk mentioned on Twitter sometime in the past that he sees Tesla reaching somewhere around 20 million EVs per year. At least that's what they're aiming for by around 2030. In order to reach these kind of massive goals, the 4680 battery really is the key. Would it be achievable with 2170 batteries? Possibly, but it'd be a lot more difficult, a lot more expensive, and it would take way more effort than I think is necessary with the 4680 batteries. And that's why the 4680 battery technology exists. The answer is not 135 fully built out Gigafactory Nevadas. The answer is a smaller number, like say 20 terafactories to be able to solve the need to um, completely transition the world to sustainable energy. And that's what Elon Musk and Tesla are working towards. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to thank the Patreon supporters who help support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.